Welcome to the Rooted in the Word podcast. My name is Rob Armstrong, the pastor here at Harrisburg Baptist Church. This is episode 41. And in episode 41, we are answering the question, what do I do after I have sinned? Listen, it's something everybody thinks about, that moment where you realize that what you did was sinful. And then what do I do? What, what do I do if it impacted somebody else? What do I do? What do I do in my relationship with the Lord? How do I handle this? Are there different consequences for different sins? Is there something extra besides what I've always known to do that I need to do? Other religions and other people have different perspectives. And my hope today is to provide you a very simple way to think about what to do after you have sinned and that it would come from Psalm 51. We're reading through the Bible as a church family this year, and Psalm 51 is one of the passages that we are reading. And so I think what David writes there is not just a way for us to learn about God's mercy and his love and his compassion towards us. I think in a very practical way, it gives us some direction on how we should handle things in our lives when we sin against the Lord. And so I, I will tell you that in the next few podcasts, both here on our church platform and then even on my personal platform of like YouTube and Facebook and all, all those types of things, we, we want to provide some some deeper conversations about some things related to this question. I mean, one, what do I do after I have sinned? But there are other things that come to mind when it comes to thinking about our sin. And so we're going to do a conversation on are there are there different consequences or are there different to kind of categories of sin and, and how should I think about my sin or we'll do, we'll do a conversation on what do I do when I've sinned against someone else? We'll also do a conversation on what do I do when someone has sinned against me? We're going to do a conversation on what do I do when I know someone else has sinned? And so just letting you know that if you feel like this right now, this episode doesn't answer all of your questions well, moving forward in our podcast world at Harrisburg, and then also in my personal platform, I'll be doing my best to provide some help to all kinds of other pieces of life and questions that come to mind when we think about our sin and how do we deal with it when it's ours and how do we deal with it when it's someone else's. Um, these are very real things. We are sinners and our sin is affecting so many different pieces of our life. And so we want to know how to handle it. And so uh, if you want, you know, pull out Psalm 51, if you need to press pause while you do that, uh, and even just kind of look through Psalm 51 as I kind of walk us through what we do after we have sinned based on what David does. And then you might even find yourself sharing this, not the podcast, but maybe just personally sitting down and sharing with someone else what you learned today. So the question before us is, what do I do after I have sinned, that whether you're confronted and that's how you come to realize that you, you have sinned, whether it's uh, you see their facial expression, what you've done to someone else or said to someone else, or you're reading through scripture and you come to that place where you're like, oh no, I, I have sinned. Well, one of the first things that you do is in your relationship with the Lord is that you just immediately appeal to God's mercy. Uh, if you look at Psalm 51, that's how it begins. Uh, and, and Psalm 51, verse 1, David says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. That David doesn't come to the Lord with his own goodness. He comes to the Lord and says, I need your mercy. That's what I would encourage you to do. After you have sinned, you turn to the Lord and you appeal not to your worth, but you appeal to his love, his mercy, his grace. And then in appealing to him, you are also admitting your sin. So I would encourage you to do that, to, to, to spell it out. This is what I did. This is what it is. And then, and then in doing so, like we appeal to him, we then acknowledge and admit our own sin. And then in that conversation with the Lord, and I think even processing it as you're, as you're thinking and praying about your relationship with the Lord, that tied into that is David says, against you only have I sinned is that your first focus when thinking about sin would be on your relationship with God, not relationship with others. That, 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 that does happen. We do need to do that. But what I've done sinfully, if, if it affects someone else, it's only sin towards them because it's sin towards him. God is holy and righteous, and he is the one by which our life, actions, words, thoughts are judged against. And so it's only sinful because of him. 
it's not sinful just because it affects somebody else. It's, it's sinful because it's against him, the one who is holy and righteous. And so it, it, it is a temptation, I think, to immediately turn to relationships with other people and just run, fixing it with them. And we need to do that. that that's a part of it. But when you realize or you're convicted that you have sinned, you appeal to his, to him for his mercy, you acknowledge your sin, admitting your sin, and even making sure that but in your own heart and in your own mind that, that you know you've done this against him. And then you ask for forgiveness. Like David says, forgive me. David even says, wash me, cleanse me. And so have that conversation with the Lord. Ask him to forgive you based on what Christ has done for you on the cross and based on his mercy and his goodness Ask him to forgive you for what you have done. Now, you you are able to be forgiven because of what Christ has done. And Christ is not going to be sacrificed again for us. So, so it is true that Christ has died for all of your sin. But you have a relationship with God. And in your relationship with him, you can appeal to his mercy, admit your sin, and say, please forgive me. Like to be in a humble posture of God, forgive me for that. And then from that position of humility and in asking for forgiveness, the next thing that I would then encourage you to do is to then ask him to renew you. Like at that point, if you're reading through Psalm 51, uh, you would see verses 10 through 12. He asked for joy to be restored. And so create in me a clean heart. And and so ask God to renew you. You, you were in that place of sinning, one, because you're a sinner, but two, because you didn't depend on the Lord and instead went your own direction. And so ask him to renew you, ask him to strengthen you, and then commit yourself to him would be the next thing that I would encourage you to do. David, uh, in his relationship with the Lord, if you look there in verse 13, he then says, then I will teach transgressor, transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Like there's a progression of David appealing to God's mercy, admitting his sin, asking for forgiveness, asking for renewal, asking for joy to return. And then, and, and Lord, as you do this in me, that there's a, there's a committing of himself and a declaring in his relationship with the Lord. And then I'm going to tell people about you. I'm going to talk to them about you, the merciful God, the forgiving God, the renewing God, the one who's still walking with me on the other side of my sin. And so I would encourage you to do the same, to take time and commit yourself to him. In fact, to do it in a way that becomes like a testimony of the Lord, that it's not, it's, we have a tendency to talk about the things we have done, whether they're good or bad. But what we see in scripture is a moving from what we have done to a testimony of what God has done. So, so in one hand, we testify to what Christ has done for us in his death on the cross and his resurrection and the life that we have in Christ. And then there's a continuing testimony of how God continues to be merciful to us and to be gracious to us and to help us, to be able to communicate. I was, I was in a place of rebellion and sin and God has forgiven me and he has renewed me. And, and, and just the other day, I was in a place of going against him, but now I'm in a place of walking closely with him, that there, that is to be a testimony on our lips to speak of God's goodness and his praise. And so I, I would encourage you to be not just transparent with the Lord about your weakness and your need for him, but in your conversations with other people to also be clear about your need for him and, and your weaknesses. We don't want to ever champion our weakness or our sin. We want to champion his strength and his goodness and his grace. And so that, that would be my encouragement to you because when David then talks towards the end, um, he, he talks about God being glorified uh, and there being this this delight that the Lord has in in, in our sacrificial posture of, of life, that it, it comes by being a people who believe we need mercy, that we can't earn a relationship with the Lord, and we can't make up for our sin when we've committed it. So we appeal to his mercy and his love that he's given to us. We 
depend upon what Christ has done for us. And then we ask God for forgiveness. We ask him for help and to renew us and help us to move away from that in a way of repentance. And then we commit ourselves to him and say, so Lord, from, from the, right, like right now, I, I want to walk with you. I want to live for you. I want to tell people about you. I want to make a difference in this world for you and to be faithful to, to, to you is what we end up praying to him. And so um, as you read through Psalm 51, I, I encourage you to slow down and let it be uh, a time of reflection and even prayer in your own life. Let it be something you go back to uh, over and over and over again in your life. And we will answer many other questions in the very near future related to sin. And um, if you're looking around at my surroundings, I am not in my study at Harrisburg. Uh, I'm on the road this week. And so I hope that while you receive the Rooted podcast on the go, that it's okay that this week while I'm on the go, I've helped you out in your relationship with the Lord. I really do hope this helps. It's been good for me uh, in my walk with the Lord to prepare for this little moment that we've had together. And uh, I'm thankful for you and for the time that you're willing to spend in this moment. And I hope and I pray uh, that this is good for your walk with the Lord. And I'll see you next time as we stay rooted in the word. 